On today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a number of laser tiles just like the ones right here, all at the same time. Hi, my name is Gil, and laser tiles are incredibly popular. In fact, mastering how to make them look good is an art in itself, and people have been creating businesses all around the world selling tile artwork. But the really interesting thing about this is that most people create their tiles one at a time. In fact, I did this myself, until I found out a way of processing those tiles quickly and efficiently. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a number of tiles, all at the same time using the tools found in Lightburn. Now I was going to split up this tutorial into two separate videos, but I wanted you to be able to get all the information as quickly as possible. So let me know in the comments below if you like this longer format tutorial. But for right now, let's go and set up this multiple tile project. So today I'm going to show you how you can process a number of laser tiles all at the same time. This is actually going to be a multi-stage project. So we're going to do both stages today. The very first one is to create a jig, which happens to be a structure that will hold your tiles in the same place every time so that we can set them up so that we can not only laser one tile, but as many tiles as you can fit on your workspace area within your laser cutter. The laser cutter that I'm using is the Emblazer 2 and it has a cutting area of 500 mil by 300 mils. And that's actually set up here in the workspace area within Lightburn. When I'm processing laser tiles, I use two different sizes. I use small tiles that are supposed to be 100 mil by 100 mil. But the reality of it is that the tiles themselves are actually 97 mil by 97 mil. And they're the measurements I'm going to use to create this jig. And I also use larger tiles and they happen to be 200 mil by 200 mil. So these are the two standard types of tiles that I'll use and in this tutorial I'm going to make a jig for both of them. Of course if you use different size tiles you can modify the measurements and use this methodology to create your own jigs so that you can process as many tiles as you want all at the same time. All right let's go and create this jig. First off I'm going to create a small tile jig so I'm going to use the square here. I'm going to create a square, come up to the top, and I'm basically going to dial in my measurements, which is 97 mil for the width and 97 mil for the height. And you'll see here, when I put the output on, we have a tile. So normally if you're creating a tile, you're doing them usually one at a time. Some people put them right in the origin down below there, or they might move them up in the middle it's totally up to your choice. What we're going to do now is we're going to create this jig that's going to allow to process a number of tiles. And I'm actually going to go and use the grid array tool. First thing about the grid array tool, you want to make sure that you haven't created a virtual array. Most people will think, oh, Gil, let's create a virtual array. We can get that all set up. Then I can just modify one. We do want to be able to go in and in a future step, modify just slightly the shapes. So by doing it as a virtual array, we're not gonna be able to do that. So make sure that's turned off, which it is. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase those X columns to see how many I can fit across. And in this case, I can fit four. I'll move this to the side. Let's see how many rows I can get in. I can get two rows, that's eight. Unfortunately, for the size of my laser bed, I can only get eight in. If I have a larger laser bed, I may be able to fit more tiles across, maybe five, maybe six. And if I've got enough height, then I can add more rows. But in this case, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have eight selectable tiles. So that is the very first step. Depending on the type of laser you have, you may have the ability to put this jig when it's finally uh, cut out in the origin point every single time, or you may have to work out a way that you can align the jig with the graphics that you're going to use in Lightburn. So I am going to use the text tool. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and put a little cross mark. It's a little big. So what I'm going to do is just come up here 
let's see if I can dial that in just a little bit. So the height is 24. Let's go 15. And I'm going to move that onto a second layer. And then that second layer is actually going to be a fill, which it already is set up for. So I'm going to place that cross mark there. And I'm also going to hit Control D, duplicate it, bring it all the way up the top. And I'm going to put it in the opposite corner. And I'm actually using the, if you can see here, I'm actually trying to center it on the hash mark that's actually there. So in that corner and in that corner, I just do that so that there's some uniformity to it. Those marks will now become the print and cut points that if I am going to put this into my emblazer, I don't have a way of being able to physically put it in the corner every time. So if I happen to move it slightly and I think that it's not aligned when I check it, I can actually come back, select these marks and then use the print and cut wizard to align the jig so I can get a perfect process every time. If you're not familiar with print and cut, I have a tutorial how to do it manually. That's I'm going to share the link right now, as well as the advanced link to print and cut that will also show you how to use the wizard. I think both these videos are really important. If you understand the process, you can use these tools in incredibly creative ways. So if you're interested, please check them out. Now we've got a little bit of real estate up here. I'm going to actually label these jigs so I know or what it is and what it can do. We use the create and edit text. And I'm going to come in here and call this. This is the small tile jig. The jig is up, as they say. Leave that in the corner here. And I'm also going to put up this little reminder for myself. I'm going to actually use the little up arrow, which is shift six this way up so I know the orientation of it. I'm just going to move that over here. It's not going to interfere with my character right there. So there's no problem. There is one other step that I'm going to do now and that is select everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to lock the selected shapes. At this point, everything is locked in. I can select them, but I can't move them, which is exactly what I want. The next part of this process or the last part of this process is to select all the cutouts that you want. So these are the parts that are going to be cut out of the material to make the jig. And I'm actually going to go and use command D, which is command duplicate, which I've done. And I'm actually going to change that onto another layer. Now it, you can see that it turned blue, but that's a fill layer. I'm actually going to turn this into a tool layer. So we've now got, if we go into the cuts and layers tool, if I turn off both the line cut and the fill, you can see we have a tool layer here that matches perfectly the area that's going to be cut out using the line command. A lot of you will be like going, why are you doing this? That's going to save us a lot of setup time in the future. And if I select the the area here, you can see that these are oh no, they're not locked. OK, so we need to lock them down as well. So let's turn off those lines so we can uh, select these tool lines and we're going to lock them in. We don't want this ever to move the minute these areas where we're going to put the tiles move the usefulness of the jig is kind of blown out because the laser won't be able to align for each tile now that we've got that all in place we're going to go back to the show all i need to do now is to make sure that i have the correct settings for the library so let's come in here for i want to cut out a line i'm going to be using some poplar three mil birch so I'm going to line, I'm going to select the line and I'm going to sign it, which is 200. I am also going to do a fill. So let's do a fill, line that too. There you go, it's a lot faster. Excellent. The tool layer is simply a tool, so we don't need to do put any sort of settings for it. Let's go and take a look. And you can see here that we have those pieces cutting out first. And then we've actually got the markers here. 
I always like to do fills or graves first as opposed to lines. So that's what, exactly what I'm going to do here. Let's go back to the preview. And you can see here, here's the engrave. And then we've got all the pieces cutting out. I'm going to go now to the emblazer too. We're going to put a piece of material in there and let's come back to show you guys how we can actually use this jig. As a bonus, I'm going to show you right now how you can adjust this design to create large format tiles. Let me show you how I create the larger uh, pile jig. And in that case, I can only fit in two jig tiles at the same time. But let's do that. So let's go up to 200 and 200 again. I'm going to use that as the line. You can see it fit, fits in there. So let's move it across just a little bit. Let's see here how we can actually get this going. And we're going to just repeat the same process. Come up to the array tool. In this case, we'll move this to the side. Guys, if you want to know a little bit more about how to use the array tools, I have a tutorial that talks all about that as well. So you can do that. In this case, I'm just going to modify it by hand. We've got now two areas that we can cut out. In this case, I'm just going to quickly duplicate them by holding Command D. And I'm going to put that straight onto the tool line. So there you go. We've got that all locked in. And then simply, if you're going to use the print and cut tools, make, make for yourself a very small plus sign. And I like to put it right in the corner there. Let's go plus, select in the corner. Don't know about you guys, but I find that when I repeat something more than once, it helps me understand the process. So that's why I'm doing it now with this bonus plus sign in there. Let's grab the text. In this case, we're going to make this 20. I'm going to call this large. Tile jig. And we're actually going to put that on the blue layer, which is already set up for the fill. And I'm going to also put a reminder here for me, or maybe I'm going to ask someone to do some work for me. Maybe I've got a backlog and I need some help. This side up also helps with the orientation. So it's that simple to make those jigs. I wouldn't want to do more than two tiles at a time anyway, because for me, this process takes out an hour, an hour, 20 minutes for one tile. You're looking at possibly up to three hours plus while it's a great way to get multiple tiles done, if you're confident with it, you can use this large tile jig at the same time. Let's go back to the laser cutter and let's see how our small tile jig is coming out. All right, so now we have the jig itself all created. We've put it in the laser, we've got it. We can now put it into the workspace. Let me show you how I use this to be able to create multiple tiles all in the same process. So as you can see here, here is the master tile jig that we've created. I'm gonna do a few things here. First of all, I'm going to turn off the output for the fill. So all the lettering is gone, don't need that. I'm also gonna turn off the black line. And what's that's gonna leave us here is these eight squares that I can select, but I can't move around because they're locked and I can choose each one. 
I'm also going to keep an eye on the cut layers area right here because depending on what the process is that I'd like to do with each tile, I can either do a number of tiles with the same process or I can actually individualize each process using a different layer. So I've got my template all set up. Let's go and start bringing in some images. So I'm gonna go into file, import. I'm gonna to go to the desktop. I've got some images that I picked here. And in fact, I'm gonna show you first of all, what I use this for, and that is to bring in these images that are actual scans of some work that some students have done. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. These are images that I captured off my iPhone. I'm just going to bring that in there and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There you go. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bring that around and you can see that the phone skewered the image a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to use the image mask feature in Lightburn to actually place these in the best way possible so that I can get this image onto a tile. Now I've gone through this in a previous tutorial. The link is right here. If you're interested in diving into how you can use this image mask tool, feel free to jump over there. We go through the whole process, but I will talk through the basics of it and how I'm gonna use it moving forward. So basically what I do is I take the image, I scale it down a little bit. For some reason, my computer's a little, I won't say glitchy, but a little bit slow today. And I place it over where I'm hoping you can see here that I, if I turn off the output, I can kind of see through the image. So this gives me a chance to just resize that image really, really close. I can see the, the letters to Xavier's name. It's a little bit high, but let me see if I can kind of bring that in just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. And what I can do is I can actually highlight both of these things. I'm going to turn back on the output so I can see what's going on here. And I can actually right click or control click and go apply mask to image. And you can see there that I still have full control. I can still resize it, but I have applied that artwork to the tile itself. So I can actually kind of zhuzh it a little bit, just a little bit. See if I can uh, get rid of the black line. It's looking good. I could probably even move that around just a touch. That little line just came up there, so I might want to just kind of expand that out just a touch. And if I'm happy with where that is, and I'm pretty happy with the, with this tile, I'm hoping Xavier will be too, I can grab both of these things again. I'm going to just do it from right to left, which, and I can actually flatten that mask image. And at this point, it is now locked in. The only other thing I need to do is actually come in here and lock the shape. So now I have locked that shape. It's not going to go anywhere with where that outline has been cut. Once I put a tile in that area, bang, it will scan that tile in. And you can see here that it has its own image layer. I can also do a number of things that are built into Lightburn with this image. So I can come in here and I can adjust the image. So I can come in here and start playing around with the contrast. Maybe I want to see if I can, that, that looks, that would be a lot better because in this tile, I'm going to use the Darkly Labs method. So it's going to be black removing white. The brightness is pretty good. Gamma, I'm not going to touch. I actually think that's pretty good, but I do need it to be a negative image. I need it to be a negative image because I'm using the Darkly Labs method, which means we want to remove on black where it says the artwork. So let me, did I just get rid of it? I probably did. Let's go adjust the image again. Nope, it's there. Perfect. And if I go into the preview, you can see that it's inverted. And of course, that's the only image on there right now. So it's not a problem. It's about 23 minutes, which is right for the laser that I'm using. Let's go on and bring in another image. Go into the import. We we'll grab another piece of artwork. It's actually Xavier's artwork again. I'm going to go in into import. I'm going to grab this hand drawing. And again, it's going to pop up a little bit bigger. That's not going to be a problem. Let's go scale it down. And we're going to bring it on in here. We'll turn it around. 
Again, I love this feature, which happens to be the output. If we turn that output off, it just gives, allows it to be kind of see-through. It's, it's opaque. And that allows me to just kind of bring it in here and really quickly just line up. And you can see the square that the students were using is just a little bit out. And it didn't help that I was taking these images with my iPhone. But that's okay because we can do all the cropping for this directly into Lightburn using the Apply Master image. Let's go hit that output again. You can see they're tied in. Now, even though I'm using the same settings for both, I can then come in here. That looks actually pretty good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There's no lines. That looks really, that looks cool. I think that could be a coronavirus if I'm not mistaken. So let's grab both of these things. Let's kind of burn it in by flattening the mask image. That's there. Let's also lock it because I don't want it to move. Don't want it to move away. And then we're going to go into the adjust image. And again, it's a negative image, so it's already set that way. Let's see if we can use the contrast a little bit to darken that image up a little bit. I don't want to get rid of the work that's just in here. Even though I'm not too sure if it's... I think that's going to be the best that I'm going to be able to get. And you can see here, it's all locked away. Let's go to the preview again. And now you can see we've got one, we've got two. And they look pretty awesome, actually. I'm impressed with what we've been able to do in just a very short period of time. And by going through this and layering up every single image, we can actually build upon what we've got. So I'm going to grab a different piece of work this time. This is a, a piece of artwork that someone sent me, which I thought would look really good on a tile. So we're going to we're going to do this a little differently. This one, we're not going to use uh, the Darkly Labs method. We're actually going to use the Norton White Tile method. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place this on a completely different layer. So I'm going to make that an orange layer. And you'll see why in a second. Even though I like splitting these off, you don't need to actually split both of these things off. You could probably lay, leave them on the same layer and make the adjustments within the adjustment tool. But I personally like to have them separate so I know what I'm dealing with. Because I may want to come back and print all of these again or laser all these tiles again. And sometimes when they're on the same layer, it just makes it really, really difficult. All right, let's see what's going on here. Turn the output off so I can see through. You can see these guys stay because they're on a completely different layer. And let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. See if anyone knows the characters. Let me know in the description below if you know who these characters are. You may win a prize. Be cool if you do. But we're going to highlight these up just for the sake of seeing what's going on. We're going to go in here. We are now going to apply the, the mask. And it looks pretty good. So here's my tile. I'm losing a little bit of information there. So I might want to move it across. No, that's not the case. Let's see if we move it down. Oh, look, that's almost, that's perfect. There you go. Someone must have uh, prepared it for me beforehand. Guys, if you have any idea of who these characters are, let me know. I think that it's a kind of cool interpretation. Maybe they all went to high school together. We'll see what's going on. Now that that is in a space that we are happy with, I'm going to highlight them again by pulling from the right to left. And I'm going to lock the shapes. And I'm also going to flatten them. Now that we're in here, let's grab this image, go into adjust image. It's the original image. Now I'm going to change the, I want to do a little bit of a, a different feel with this one. Mm, what am I going to do? Let's do a Stucky. Stucky always works well. You can see the difference here with the kind of image texture you have here. As we're zooming in compared to the original image there. Uh, what's Jarvis look like? No, I think I'm going to... Um, for this one, I'm going to leave it as a Stucky. So that's cool. It's not a negative image. We want to burn this onto a white tile, so that's done. Let me zoom back out. My computer's a little glitchy today. I think I'm going to clean up the hard drive. And I'm going to just see if the contract... Actually, it's pretty good. And this is what I love about this 
adjust image feature. We talk about this as well and we go into deep, deep dive for the adjust image. If you want to go check this out, there is right now a link that'll take you to it and you, it'll walk you through all the different options that you have here. We're going to leave it like that and we're going to move on to the next tile. Let's go and grab a harder image to put in. That one was all worked out for us. Let's go grab this one. All right, huge image, huge black and white image of another character that I enjoy. This one won't be for a prize, but if you guys know who this is, as in the character name, let me know below in the amazing comment section. I should have saved this for another one, but that's okay. All right, let's go and do the same thing again. Now, both of these are going to be my Norton White tile method so i'm going to leave these on the same on the same layer and you can see that again i try to build these workflows in in a way that i can actually use them myself i'm now going to select both of them again just to make sure they're selected go to apply mask layer and you can see here that it's looking good i go to the output and this is a nice dark image, nice dark image. Cool thing is that I can move this around as well. In fact, I am going to make it a little bit bigger. I wanted his hands, wanted the idol's hands to be right in the middle. I got a feeling, so yeah, this is what I love about the mask. I can actually, if I wanted to, I could actually just bring it all the way down, but then I've got a lot of, a lot of area to this tile that's not being covered so let's increase it you can actually kind of frame what's going on here best way you want or you know what i could actually even just zoom straight into this strange gentleman with a uh, a tech nine and in fact you know what i am going to do that for this one i'm actually going to make it even bigger because i want to show you guys the versatility it's not just the areas it's defined you can actually be kind of really creative i like that that's what I'm going to lock in. And you can see here, when I click on there, you've got a huge box because I've resized the whole thing. Do yourself a favor. This is why you end up going into flatten mask image. If you need to, you can always undo it. But now we've got an image. We're going to lock that in. And now we're going to play with it. Let's see. It looks pretty good. I've got to be honest with you. And that's the Stucky. Look at, wow, that looks so good. And that's an image I took off the internet. I haven't touched it up in any sort of software. We can uh, bring this up a little bit more. Bring the brightness down. And you can start seeing we're getting a great shade. We're losing also part of his face in the shadow, which I'm really liking. I really like that. We can bring it also up with the gamma. And you can see that's going to be a lot clearer it's also brought up a lot of the detail behind him but you can see in his face in this area here from the original one we haven't lost too much detail on that we'll go into those shadows just a bit so now we've got this bright area which is something that i want uh in the tile because it's going to be white and we've got this beautiful pattern we're seeing a lot more detail in in his face but we're still getting that gradient and we can also kind of look into the shadows a little bit. I'm really happy with that. That looks really good. That's a tile I want to make. Because we're going to shake the pillars of heaven with that tile. That's a pretty cool one. I'm going to quickly just go through and put the last four tiles in. And then show you how I'm going to set up those layers. So that I know what's going on. And we're ready to process them out. Okay. So now we have eight different types of tiles. We have some hand-drawn art that was photographed with a smartphone and brought in, manipulated. These one, two, three, four tiles are all sitting on this image layer. And you will see here that it's a negative image. And that image is actually going to be the Darkly Labs tile process. We'll put the air assist on while we're here. So we've got all of that worked out. 
then we have one photo, two photo, three photo, and some digital artwork. They are all going to be the Norton white tile method. So Norton white tile method. And again, if you're interested in looking into what the Norton white tile method is or the Darkly Labs method in, we will have a link at the end of this video. You guys can go and check that out. All we need to do now is really just put in the settings that is going to work best for your laser. In this case, I'm going to just put in some hypotheticals. So we're going to call, we'll just, we'll leave it at 2101. The truth of the matter is, even though we're using two different methods, the settings are the same. Max power will be 100. So we have 2000 at 100 speed. All we need to do now is check the preview. And you can see that it is running some of the jobs. Some of the jobs are coming up a little differently because of the settings. Don't worry about that. I've always found that depending on the Norton white tile method, uh, sometimes the preview doesn't work as well as you're hoping in the preview does not mean that it's not going to work on the tile. You sometimes have to just basically make sure that you've done a test before. Make sure that you fill shapes individually is clicked. We'll check that also on this one. There it is. So let's go back to and let's see what happens when we scroll through. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to take me four and a half hours to make these eight tiles. At this point, you don't need to turn on any of these. I sometimes leave just the small uh, tile jig just here, making sure that the output is turned off. And again, we can check that really, really quickly. Yep, nothing else is coming up. So that is awesome. Oh, interesting. It does bring up invert for some of them. And I've never seen that in the preview, but because we have invert we got negative image on the turned on here. It's doing that in the actual preview. So that's why we're having some of these blowouts on these images. But the best way to check that is to then send this job to the laser. We're going to do that right now and we're going to come back and see the results. Now, before I run this laser job, I want to align it using the print and cut method. And this is how I'm going to do it. If you happen to have a laser just like mine that you need to use print and cut to make sure that you can align your jig with the graphics that are here. This is where before you send this job to the laser, you want to be clicking up here and also using the print and cut wizard. So you are able to go through, align the first set position with your laser and go through that whole process so that you can get a perfect alignment on your job. Again, if you're interested, we go through this on a number of tutorials and the link is in the description below. All right, let's go and send this to the laser. I'm going to actually use the jig, but because of time, I think what I might do is actually pick out certain tiles in the jig. Otherwise, we're going to spend the whole day making tiles. Let's go. Unfortunately, due to supply demands, I could not get any white tiles to process. So I'm actually using colored tiles to show you how easy it is to load up the jig and align the tiles using the print and cut method to get a great result. Now to test the process and check the alignment, I'm using normal photocopy paper in my Emblazer 2 and selected the top right tile design to test out the alignment. Because the Emblazer 2 doesn't have a hard stop to align the material, I'm actually using the print and cut feature with the alignment marks that I placed on the jig to make sure that everything lines up. If everything works well, we'll get a perfect engrave. Let's find out.
Now you can see for yourself that the image engraved onto the paper without marking the tile jig at all. This looks perfect. And that's all you need to know. You now have the information to build your own tile jigs to the specifications of your personal laser. And of course, the settings that I used in this tutorial only work for the Emblazer 2 and specifically my laser. So make sure that you run tests before you actually run the job on your laser. Okay, if you want a copy of this tile jig, I'm gonna make it available on our Facebook group and the link is below. Also, if you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that subscribe button and bell icon because supporting this project just brings more projects to the table. I'm gonna go and make a whole bunch of artwork now using these, this laser tile jig. And I really look forward to seeing what you create with this process. I think it's gonna change how a lot of people work. Feel free to share what you come up with in our Facebook group. But until next time, I'll catch you for the next tutorial right here on the laser live stream. Go make something amazing.